school website um, for anyone that is not able to attend. Um, and so with that, I am going to turn this presentation over to Ms. Stack to start, and then teachers will be joining in to share information. So thank you and good evening. Hi, everybody. I waved. Uh, <laughs> so I am kind of going back and forth between the slide because I have the PowerPoint on my computer, so I can't see if anybody asks a question, raises their hand, puts in the comment. So hopefully somebody is monitoring that for me. Um, welcome to our 2020-2021 school year. I am Ms. Stack, our seventh grade team leader. I have been at Sparrows Point for, this is my sixth year, wow. Um, and I have been the team leader for the last four years. It's been quite enjoyable. Uh, if your kids have any big concerns, anything like that, um, they can always come to me. I am the one that will be organizing any of our team conferences, meetings that we would have with all of the teachers. I can be a go-between between the teachers. So my email is there. It's kstack at bcps.org. So if you ever have any questions or need anything, I am available. And Ms. Sutton. All right. Yep. Good evening, everyone. I am Miss Sutton. I am assist one of the assistant principals here at Sparrows Point. Um, and primarily, I oversee seventh grade and part of eighth grade, but Ms. Owens and I work together to support the entire building. So I wanted to say good evening to everyone. On the slides, you have my information. It's always posted on the website. Um, if you ever need a time to have a question or just want to reach out, um, feel free to contact me through my office hours or my email is the easiest way. Um, if you need to, to contact me by phone, I can give you the my cell phone number. Or you can call the school office. I do go into the office um, at least once a week to make sure things are up to date and check on um, different information. So I am there and available to everyone. So I want to say good evening. Um, I am not going to take up a lot of time because like I said, the teachers have prepared a wonderful presentation for you all. Um, and so I want to make sure that they have enough time to share their information. So again, I want to say welcome to everyone and thank you for coming tonight. And just as a reminder, um, so, you know, our Sparrows Point Middle School Code of Conduct still is in apply in our virtual environment. And that is that at Sparrows Point Middle School, we have pride when we practice our safe behaviors, respect ourself and others, interact with empathy and inclusivity, demonstrate responsible citizenship and exercise high academic standards. And though we have gone virtual, we are still holding our kids and our teachers accountable to this. This is who we are. We are Sparrows Point. So we will always represent that pride that we have in our school and our community. Hi, I'm uh, Ms. Karawaki. I teach seventh and eighth grade math this year. I have the pre-algebra and the geometry kids. Um, my email is hkarawaki at bcps.org. My office hours are listed below. They're also on my school G site for all the kids. Hi, I'm Ms. Cajero. I am the pre-algebra teacher. Uh, there's my email and my office hours. Um, those are also on my Schoology page. Um, I've taught at Sparrows Point for, this is my third year, and I taught at Battle Grove before this. Hello, I'm Sibby Moreland. Um, I am the seventh grade math teacher, pre-algebra, and then GT Algebra 1. Um, I am, am an alumni of James Madison University. Uh, I coach downstairs in the coach volleyball downstairs in the high school for the JV team. Um, my email is listed there, and then my office hours are also listed. So, Mr. Kirby couldn't join us tonight, so we just wanted to introduce him really quick. Um, Mr. Kirby has a few of our seventh grade math students. Um, he is bopping between sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. He teaches all three subjects or all three grade levels. So, we just wanted to 
say a quick bit about Mr. Kirby. Um, he's been teaching for nine years. This is um, all of our third year at Sparrows Point. Me, Ms. Cajero, and Mr. Kirby um, all came in at the same time. Um, he's married with two cats. He loves his cats. <laughs> um, he, he likes music, sports, chess, um, and then you can just read a little bit about him. His email's listed. Um, but we are the seventh grade math teachers. Um, this is still me. <laughs> um, so here you have listed the pre-algebra units of study. Um, we have five units in pre-algebra. Um, we are going to work through these units. We're going to be testing unit one sometime around Halloween. Um, so as we're working through these units virtually, um, they do take a little longer than they would in the classroom, um, but that's fine. We're working to build those foundational pre-algebra skills before they work into algebra one, which, which is a high school level course next year. Um, so a Majority of the seventh grade kids are in the pre-algebra classes. Um, and then the textbook can be found on, if you go into BCPS 1, um, instructional and productivity tools, and it's called Hofton, Mifflin, and Harcourt, or something like that. We call it HMH. Um, if you ever need access to the textbook, um, have your child send us a quick message and we can show them how to access it. Um, the GT Algebra 1 curriculum um, is four units long. Um, unit 1 is also really long. We will be testing that around Thanksgiving is the plan right now. Um, there's four units there. They kind of build off of each other as does pretty much everything in math. Um, and then the textbook is also the HMH textbook. The textbook, your children really don't have to re um, really don't have to like read or like do much with. Um, a lot of the textbook we use for our planning purposes, and then we use the interactive student edition sometimes um, to get them involved in different things. But um, that's not really something that they have to worry about unless they just need that extra practice, and then we can let them know how to access that textbook. So for grades, 30% of it is the major grades. That's unit assessment and module quizzes. Um, this goes for both GT and um, pre, like algebra and pre-algebra. And then our minor assignments, those are 70% of your grades. That's your daily assessments. The show what you know, that's what we've been doing um, virtually. Discussions, Wednesday work, so they um, that will also be a minor grade. Um, we also have practice. This is not counted towards grades. Um, those are warm, warm up, some triads, um, participation, and collaborative boards. Um, so that's the makeup of their grades. All right, so we have a redo policy. The redo assignments can be requested for minor assignments within two weeks of the date of the assignment was graded and prior to a quiz or test related to that topic. It is highly recommended that the students seek the teacher out during office hours or from one-to-one -one assistance prior to redo assignments. So that's like our Wednesdays when we work with kids one-on-one -on -one or a small group. Um, then we have the missing work. If a student has a missing or non-graded assignment, you will see an M for that assignment. M is um, inputted as a zero in the grade book. A student should complete their assignments before the due date to prevent an M as their grade. Um, on Wednesdays, Wednesdays I know is something new because we've it's um, a time for them to get caught up on their work. So if there are a lot of missings, this is definitely a time that they want to message their teachers to try to see um, how they can either open up assignments um, or if they are invited to a small group, it's not optional. Kids are expected to be there. So if a teacher reaches out and says that they have small groups that day, we are um, checking and making sure that all of our students and tracking which students are coming and which ones aren't. Um, for math, we also have a Wednesday folder on our main on our main Schoology page, um, and that just has our extra practice in there. So it's just review of skills that we've taught the past week. Um, that is a grade. Um, we do, you, um, it does go in the grade book. It's a minor assignment. And there's just, I think this week, um, there's like six to 10 questions. This week, I think pre-algebra had six. So um, it's not too uh, much, but that they're expected to complete that. They also need to make sure they're logging in before one o'clock to be marked as present. Uh, 
Um, one of the tools that we are using is an interactive notebook. All your kids in pre-algebra should have got the uh, number system with the sunshine for the first unit. They should keep this because every time we introduce a new concept, we're going to sit there and do teacher notes. We're going to give them detailed information that they can use anytime they're doing the practice, the boards, um, any of the Wednesday work, homework, anything. It's there to help them as a resource. And one of the things we're doing that the board that's a practice as one of the big things and most of the math teachers are using is Desmos. It's where the kids can work what we call asynchronously on their own, but we can monitor what they're doing in uh, real time and help them. We can notice right away they're struggling with a concept and we can pull them out in the small groups. We can work with kids. Um, it's so it's almost like we're in the classroom walking around the closest we can get right now. And the kids are doing a really good job and it helps us give positive feedback to them and know what they need. And so based off of some of the Desmos, we'll give the instruction that, hey, come meet us for Wednesday, because I think we need to sit there and work together and get your grades up and get you understanding the concept. Um, okay, so this GT algebra class, this is my first period and my last period. So if your student is in first period Miss Moreland or seventh period Miss Moreland, um, they are in the GT algebra class. Um, a couple things about the GT algebra class. It is highly recommended that if you have the ability to purchase a TI-83 or a TI-84, so that calculator that you're looking at on that screen, um, I still have mine from high school. I have like two of them. I don't know where they both came from, um, but you will use it in every math class through high school and through the rest of middle school. Um, we will use it a ton in this algebra class, so it is recommended if possible that you purchase your own um, for your family or your child to use. Um, if you can't, no worries. We have lots of ways that we're going to work around that in class, um, but it's great if you can. Um, the second thing that I wanted to point out is that this is a high school level class. Um, I gave the students this this speech at the very or the very first day of school. Um, it is a high school level class. In order to pass um, and graduate high school, you have to pass this class. Um, so. Options are pay attention and work hard and we will make sure that your students pass this class. Um, but it does involve some work. Um, it does involve some taking notes with the class and doing what you need to do um, because it is a hard class. So, and I will be the first to admit that. Um, but I think that each of your students is very capable of being successful in the class as long as we are both putting forth the work um, that's necessary to be successful. So, um, and then finally, the notebook. Um, it's the same one as the pre-algebra one. It's different content, but it has the same sunshine on it. Um, the GT algebra one is called Linear Functions and Models. Um, so we will be using that until around Thanksgiving, but we take notes in that about every other day, every day. Um, and it's just a resource for the students to go back to um, when they need help and to study for tests and quizzes and, and stuff like that. I'm not sure if our specials teachers are here from their previous one or not yet. They're actually still presenting in the sixth grade one, but I think they're almost finished. Okay. Well, I, we have their information here and hopefully they'll be able to, to pop in. Um, and if they do, we'll give them a time to speak, but we will keep moving on with our seventh grade presentation for right now. You want me to just jump ahead? Mm -hmm. Just keep going. If they come in, then we'll pop. We'll just um, I'll jump back. Yep. You can hop down to me because I'm probably the last one for specials, but I'm here. Mr. Potts. Mr. Whitman. Wait, sorry. There we go. I'm ELA for sixth grade, AVID for seventh, so I'm here for specials. Hello, I'm Ms. And Ms. Ryan just joined us, Mr. Right. Whitman, as we were getting ready to get started. So we are able to go back. Perfect timing, Ms. Ryan. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Well, good evening, everyone. My name is Ms. Ryan, and I am one of the physical education teachers here at Sparrows Point Middle. I am the department chair for health and physical education and I am also the athletic advisor. This is my 23rd year here at Sparrows Point Middle. Um, Mr. Sefcheck, have you joined us? Would you like to introduce yourself? 
not yet. All right, you can go to the next slide. I'll let him introduce himself when he jumps in. Uh, for physical education, we do have expectations for your child to come to class on time and dressed for physical activity. Um, there are going to be, every day we are going to be getting up and we are going to be moving. And so uh, your, your, your students are, are asked to get up and move. You know, what we did this week is we talked about exercise and we talked about the importance of exercise. And so it's just going to help their overall health. We ask that you, your child tries their best and don't be afraid to ask, okay? Mr. Sefcheck and I are here uh, to help them out. We also encourage your children to turn on their cameras. Um, I cannot tell you as a teacher, you know, my I got into teaching because I love students and I really do have such a much more successful class when I have students that have their cameras on and they are actively engaged in my class. Um, and we also have uh, assignments every week, which are a show what you know that your, your students are expected to complete. So Mr. Sefcheck, you wanna go ahead and introduce yourself? Unmute yourself, Mr. Sefcheck. Yeah, so I, I kept missing the button. My, my thing's messed up, my touchpad. But uh, yeah, I see a lot of familiar names on here. I'm Mr. Sefcheck. I teach phys ed with Ms. Ryan. Um, I probably know the mid most of your students, but I didn't have them last year. I just got to meet them being in the in the in the locker room or just in the in the gym with them. But yeah, it's my I, was, I can't remember. I was saying this last last meeting as well. I think it's like my my tenth year maybe at Spares Point. I can't remember. It's been a while though. Not as long as Miss Ryan. That's all I know. But um, like Miss Ryan was saying, just make sure your kids are keeping up with their work. They should be making sure they're keeping up with their work. So. If you notice your grade in phys ed is starting to slip a little bit, I'm sending messages out to kids who are missing assignments. It's their responsibility to respond. You're getting more mature now. They need to make sure they're uh, they're keeping up with what they need to keep up with. So it's it's uh it's our job to make sure they know what they're missing, but it's their job to to reach out and also try to make sure they're getting in contact with us when they need to get something done. I'm also the cross country coach. It's definitely different this year because it's, it's virtual. Um, we need runners. So if you have a kid who has the interest in running, um, we, we meet every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So we have three days of practice, three days of runs. It's just a great way to be part of a group. If they've been sitting around more than they, what they should be during this time where, where a lot of stuff's getting canceled, then have them join cross country. It's an hour after school. Each day is from 3.30 to 4.30. Um, we make it as fun as possible. Like I try to express my kids all the time, running's never necessarily that much fun for me at least, but it's uh it's the reward you get from from doing the run. So encourage them to come out. If you have any kid who has an interest in playing a sport and they want to stay in shape for that for that sport, then it's a good way to come out and get a couple miles each week. Um, that's all I have to say. So nice meeting you, nice seeing you. If you ever need anything, make sure you do get a hold of me. So this is Miss Ryan again, just to share that um, our scope and sequence or our units. Um, are going to be a little bit different in the virtual world. So the next couple of slides just show what we're going to be doing. Uh, this week we've been talking about exercise and the importance of exercise and the importance of activity. That exercise doesn't need to be a negative word. Um, that the students need to find something that they really do enjoy. And even when we're at school, the whole purpose, one of the purposes of phys ed that I really stress to Mr. Subcheck is, is your, your child and you would need to find something that you enjoy to get yourselves moving. Um, so a couple of things we're going to be working on this in the next couple of weeks will be fitness walking, jump roping, line dancing, cardio drumming, uh, aerobic activities. Next slide, please. Um, net wall games, fielding running games, invasion games, flexibility, juggling, muscular strength. One of the things that is the challenge for phys ed is equipment. Not everybody has equipment at home. And so then uh, what we're going to do is kind of become um, our STEM teachers, our science and math teachers, and try to figure out how we can create equipment with what we have around our house. Next squad, next. Ms. Antonelli is our health teacher. Hi, everybody. So my name is Ms. Antonelli. I do sixth, seventh, and eighth grade health. So most of your kids who are in seventh grade this year had me last year in sixth grade. Um, I do teach every single student in the school, either the first half of the year or the second half. So we get to know each other pretty well. 
Um, I just want to go over real quick a few things about our units, Ms. Stack. So these are the four units we're going to hit. Um, the big one right now is mental and emotional health due to um, the COVID and being stuck at home and virtual learning. That's a big unit that we don't usually cover, but we are this year. Substance abuse prevention. We're going to talk a lot about marijuana and alcohol use. Safety and injury prevention. We talk about um, different types of just ways to stay safe. Uh, that unit is it gets pretty um, particular, and to be honest, I can't remember exactly what we do in that unit. And then healthy eating is pretty explanatory. We teach the kids uh, how to make healthier choices within their diet. And just FYI, I welcome redos anytime, as many as they need. They the kids just have to let me know. Uh, same with office hours. I can meet them or you guys whenever you need. Just give me a heads up, and we can figure it out. This is Miss Ryan again. So often uh, the last couple of weeks, I know the parents have been wondering what to do on Wednesdays. Uh, the first thing that your, your your child should do is to go into Schoology and check their grade book. Um, they, an example of the picture on the right is what my phys ed classes look like. So they should go into the phys ed and take a look and see what they're missing. Uh, they also, at the top of their Schoology page, there's a little envelope and that is where students can check their messages. I strongly encourage your child to check their messages daily um, because that is the way that we right now are communicating with your child. On Wednesdays, they should finish any work from their previous health or phys ed classes. They should contact their teacher for assistance. And they also may be invited to attend a small group uh, by their teacher or they can request one as well. And so right now also I ask parents and students to be patient Miss Antonelli and Mr. Sefcik and I teach rough, Miss Antonelli right now is teaching around 350 students and Mr. Sefcik and I are teaching around 300 students. So that is 300 pieces of grading that we have to do. And so your students are constantly messaging us. So I just ask for patience when it comes to that. Next slide, please. Um, I also am the athletic advisor uh, at Spares Point Middle School. We have athletics, badminton, cross country, basketball, tennis, track and field, and allied softball. Right now, um, Mr. Sefcik has started the cross country program this week, and Ms. Antonelli started the badminton program. And tonight, I will be having a program at 735, a Google Meet, for you to jump in, and I can give you a quick review of what the athletic program is, if you have any questions, all right, if your child is interested. At this time, Mr. Sefcik, Ms. Antonelli, and I will be leaving this Google Meet to go into the eighth grade Google Meet. So if you have any questions at the end that need to be addressed to us, Ms. Stack will forward those questions to us and we will get back to you. Thank you very much. See ya. All right. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Mr. Powis and I'm the Fine Arts Department Chair. Uh, I teach band strings and general music. Uh, my email address is mpowis at bcps.org, and those are all my office hours that I'll be available um, if you need a chat. You can go ahead and next slide. Um, so things that you're going to need for band and orchestra, you're going to need an instrument, and instruments can be borrowed from the school on a first-come, first-served basis. Tomorrow, I will be at the school from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. to give out instruments. Um, and if you, you need a loan agreement form that I will have on hand um, to, to sign out an instrument. If we need any additional dates, um, I'll give those out as well. You are going to need some materials. And I am putting in chat um, a couple of uh, Word doc or documents that you're going to need. Um, this is also in their, um, in their Schoology page. And can be found in a black folder. You can go ahead to the next slide. Um, these are some topics we're going to talk about. We're going to tune our instruments, and some string players will probably freak out if they break a string. It's not a big deal. A, a replacement string can be ordered, and I'll teach them how to put that on. Um, we're going to learn how to practice and improve music, some no reading fluency, interpreting composers' messages and meanings, and we're going to write music as well. You can get to the next page. All right, is Mr. Swain here? 
Um, he, he might not be back from out of the meeting. I know he's picking his daughter up from Tance. Um, so this is Mr. Swain, our chorus teacher. Um, he also teaches general music. I do know this year that kids are going to uh, use the recording functions and the microphone functions and their device to uh, record and do things for chorus um, and that you're not going to need anything extra other than the working BCPS device. You can go ahead uh, to the next slide. We do have a lot of the same expectations as phys ed that everybody's going to become prepared for class, um, ready to perform. Um, they might also do some singing, they might play instruments, there might be some clapping, humming, and virtual tools if the uh, playing of the instruments or singing is not possible at that time. Um, and then small group act, uh, small group Wednesdays are an expectation. If you're if you're invited, we do expect that you'll be there and that all students can redo assignments as well. Uh, if you have any questions, you can contact me at mpowis at bcps.org and I'll respond to you within 24 hours. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Mrs. Nestor. I'm sorry, I'm a little late. Um, I'm an art teacher. Um, for well, my expectations for art, students are expected to submit pictures of their artwork and assignments on Schoology. Um, every student should log into Schoology and check grades for feedback and missing assignment. Um, Wednesday small group for seventh grade is 8.30 to 9. Yes, I'm sorry. I'm just double checking. Um, uh, materials, you need sketchbook, pencil, color pencils, and marker. If you don't have um, materials, please contact me. Oh, you uh, for I'm sorry. For the first quarter, we will be learning about personal identity, um, psychological identity, social identity, elements of art, principle of design. We're going to be doing a lot of drawing, painting. Um, we'll create a lot of fun art projects. Hello, my name is Mr. Dees. Uh, I am the other art teacher. Uh, Ms. Nestor, I don't know if the right word is boss. Ms. Nestor's kind of like my boss. I don't really know. She's uh, If your kid's not lucky enough to have Ms. Nestor, then they wind up in my class. And what we're going to do this year is we're going to use the things called the elements of art. You might have heard of them. They're like the basic building blocks. I like to sneak those in with every lesson that we teach. I know that I've worked with Ms. Nestor to see that we're both doing that in our lessons this year. Um, so that's like line, shape, value, other things like that form, which is a 3D shape. All those sorts of things we kind of use to build and gain skills over the course of the years. While we're building those skills, we also fulfill all the standards um, which we're required to do, which I like the way that it's set up. It's that we need to make art. We need to learn about art from history. We need to be able to write about that art. And we need to be able to understand how that art connects to our world, uh, connects to our history connects to our society, ourselves, all that sort of stuff. And as Ms. Nestor said, the first thing that we are starting off with is an identity unit. Tomorrow in class, I know that we're gonna start making, the first time we just set up a studio and everybody had to take a picture and upload it, that was basically me seeing what art supplies people had and getting them to show me that they know how to upload a picture. Then we did graffiti names um, or any sort of decorative name drawing to kind of personalize something. And now we're gonna start working on a poem that's gonna become a mind map. We're gonna decorate them. It's gonna be wonderful. And you see that on Wednesdays, please do not think that Wednesday meetings with me from 8.30 to nine are um, only for people that are falling behind. It's also, I've the, the main people that I've had coming, I see some people here right now that have been coming to my office hours have been people that just love to draw, have a half an hour off and they wanna, they send me a message. Hey, Mr. Dees, can I come to your office hours between this class and this class? And uh, they come, we talk about something they could draw, I critique some of the drawings that they're working on and they get to improve. That's sort of why I put it on the slide. It's gonna be there all the time. If you don't contact me eventually, I'll contact you. If you're falling behind, contact me. If you feel like you're way ahead and you aren't getting enough art in your life, contact me. That's it, that's all I got. You can go to the next slide. Hey, 
Hey everybody, uh, I'm Mr. Potts, I'm the tech ed teacher. I teach all the grades, so sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. Um, I switch with Miss Antonelli, so if, it, if your child doesn't have me the first semester, they will the second. Um, as a tech ed teacher, my main goal really is to have your child uh, building and designing as much as possible. And really that was my goal in the classroom, and I'm trying to make that my goal in this virtual classroom that we have going on as well. The only thing that might be a little bit different is obviously we don't have the same kind of materials available uh, or the same kind of tools. Um, and I'm not there to make sure, you know, somebody doesn't accidentally cut their finger off. So uh, there's a couple of things that's a little limit, limited what we can actually get to. Um, but there's really two things that I wanted to stress in this meeting. Um, the first thing is just the ability to take photos of the things that they create and then to be able to upload those photos to Schoology because that's truly the basis of their grades are what are they creating? Um, are they meeting the design goals and the build goals that we set out? Um, and so that's really a big thing, right? Because typically I would tell kids, hey, put your phone away. In this case, I'm saying, hey, go get that phone and use it because it's really the easiest way to upload to Schoology. Uh, plus the photos are usually a much better quality than uh, the camera on the, the laptop. Um, the other big thing is really having materials. And we're, we're in the process, we have some stuff on order that hopefully it'll arrive soon and I'll be able to go into the building and put some kits together for people. Um, but even then, that kit probably is gonna run out. And so I did put a list in the uh, Schoology page for every class that's on the main page when you go to Tech Ed. And this is just a list of suggested items that we'll probably end up needing. Um, now this stuff is all pretty, you know, it's not very expensive. It's stuff that you could possibly get at the dollar store or the grocery store. Um, but that's something that's going to be important to have. We typically, I'm almost always going to say that we're going to have a week uh, of, of time for them to work on it because I know not everybody might have the materials that they need. And, and because of that, right, I'm obviously I'm really uh, lenient on when it gets done. I just don't want that person to wait all the way until the end of the semester to do these things or the end of the quarter. Um, so if there's ever a situation where you can't get that stuff, please let me know. There's always a, a possibility of substituting things, uh, worst case scenario. Um, anyway, it's great to be here again, and um, hopefully we'll get back in the building eventually soon, and we can get back to doing some woodwork. Uh, but if you guys need to get in touch with me, my email's right there. And uh, obviously, I'm always available on Wednesdays as well. So just shoot me an email, or um, I might send you one. Uh, through Schoology or through email to arrange some kind of a meeting. But I hope you guys have a good rest of the night. I'm back, seventh grade. Well, hello there. I'm Mr. Wickman, and I am a jack of all trades at Spurs Point Middle School. Um, my main role is AVID coordinator, running the AVID program for seventh and eighth grade right now. And I also um, Moonlight as a special education teacher and reading teacher some days of the week. Um, I'm also the high school lacrosse coach downstairs. Um, state runners up for the first time in school history two years ago. Would have won state champions last year if the season wasn't canceled. So we hope to see you there in the spring. Um, for AVID though, I just want to share uh, seventh grade AVID is the first year of AVID that um, Spares Point offers. So we are excited to have about 50 students between seventh and eighth grade now, um, but we also push out lessons to the whole school. Um, the AVID team at Spurs Point is also responsible for half of the advisory lessons that we push out to all students in our school. So the ones where students have to submit their grades and do a weekly grade check and check in with teachers every Tuesday, that's us, that's, the, that's what AVID does. We work on college and career readiness and you see that Wicker is up on the screen here the W-I-C-O-R, these are our five tenants in AVID. These are the five things we do no matter what, and we try to get into every lesson. So we're writing, we're thinking about inquiry, we're collaborating, which has been a challenge online, obviously. Uh, we're working on organization. So when students are asked to like create computer folders and um, submit things specific ways, that's us. That's us trying to design like a streamlined way to do it. And obviously we're still working out some kinks there. And then of course the last one's reading. Um, we want to teach reading strategies across the whole school. 
and so that we're all on the same page. So when you're in classes or you hear your students are in classes and someone says, the teacher tells them to mark the text by numbering paragraphs, circling key vocabulary, and highlighting or underlining essential details, that's AVID. So that's those are some of the strategies that we push um, to get us to and through college. Also wanna give a shout out to my seventh grade advisory in attendance. I see quite a few of you here. So shout out to Fred's Peoples. Fred is uh, a basset hound who decided that he needed a little extra screen time during the first week. So we have become Fred's peoples. Thank you. Hi everyone, um, I'm Ms. Sweller. I am the science department chair. Uh, I teach seventh and eighth grade science. I teach two of seventh grade GT and one of eighth grade GT. Um, this is my fifth year in Baltimore County and my fifth year at Sparrows Point Middle School. Hi everyone, I am Mrs. Mealy. I teach sixth and seventh grade science. This is my 10th year of teaching in Baltimore County and my second year at Sparrows Point Middle School and I absolutely love it. Um, my email is there as well if you need to contact me. And um, my two degrees were from Salisbury University and Notre Dame of Maryland. Hi, I am Miss Roof. I teach seventh and eighth grade science. Um, this is my second year at Sparrows Point and second year at Baltimore County. Um, I got environmental studies and environmental education from Slippery Rock. I got my degrees there. Um, and speaking of the environment, the bottom pictures of my little profile are all the class pets that are in um, my classroom. And then I also have a picture of my dog in there. She's not at the school. Um, and then I also, with Miss Ruff, who's a eighth grade teacher, do um, Green Club at the school. So if you have kids that are interested, um, have them reach out to me on Schoology, and then we can get them into our awesome club. Um, and like Mr. Wickman, I also coach lacrosse in the high school. So just wanted to shout that out. Uh, we also have Mrs. Smith, and she is going to be with the science department. She's currently at the sixth grade back to school night, so she asked us to go ahead and share for her. Um, she will be working with our 6th, 7th, and 8th grade science classes, and she is a, the Special Education Department Chair. So for our 7th grade science curriculum, we have a lot of topics that we cover. Our first unit, which is going to be the one that we're starting, I know most of us are starting either this week or on Monday, is called S'more Energy. So this is where we're looking at how energy is transferred from, from the sun to a um, solar cooker in order to cook us more. Um, unfortunately, we aren't able to do the hands-on activities because we're not going to be in the classroom. However, we will be looking at um, some resources to help guide our thoughts. Um, our second unit is Form Follows Function. This is about biology. This unit focuses, oh, can you go back? So sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, this is our biology unit when we focus on the um, function and structure of living things. Um, the essential question that we will be focusing on is how my body works. And the third unit, which is also on this slide, is the chemistry within us. Um, so the driving question for this is how um, do we know if a chemical reaction occurred? So that is a lot of um, experimenting and figuring out chemical reactions um, and then how much energy and how is energy involved in those chemical reactions. Um, and then we actually look at artificial sugar and compare it to um, sugar and they write a CER at the end of that, which is claim evidence and reasoning. So the fourth unit that we go over is called Awaken the Force, and this is a physics unit. So this one's a little bit different because there's too many units within one. So the first part of it, we're looking at um, electromagnets, magnets, magnetic fields, and potential energy. Um, for this one, we're trying to figure out like how necessarily we could get a motor to work. Um, so for that one, we do look a lot at the electromagnet. And then the second part of this is where we are focusing on gravitational potential energy and how this affects objects. Go back. <laughs> <laughs> Our fifth unit is also physics, so let's entertain you. This focuses on wave transfers. Um, 
Students will be using the engineering design process during this unit and creating musical instruments. And the last one is actually called Survive and Thrive. It's biology and environmental science. Um, so we look at um, different organisms in a community and see how they interact with each other and how they can benefit um, each other in the environment um, and how they survive and reproduce. I know some of the other teachers are going to go over this as well for major and minor breakdowns of assignments. So in science, our major assignments are 30% of the grade, and these include the learning cycle assessments and the culminating events, and these are the county-provided um, assessments that we do. For our minor, that is 70% of our grades, and that includes daily assessments, um, practice assignments that we're doing, show what you know, discussions, trying it out, and daily participation. Um, the minor assignments can be redone to improve grades. Um, so Wednesday work, um, this is time that students have one-on-one -on -one, um, or small group instruction. Um, they can finish work from a previous um, class for science or redo any assignments. Um, this is not a day that students have off. Um, we are really encouraging your children to look at Schoology for our messages. I know some of my kiddos have a bunch of unread messages in their um, folder right now. So please make sure that you are encouraging your, um, your children to read the messages for any invitation that we have for small group instruction because the expectation is that they are showing up for those small groups on Wednesday. Um, and then just some of the items that will be needed for science class is, of course, a charged computer. Um, quiet work areas if those are possible, and then interactive science folders. So I know that some of our teachers are taking the opportunity to either do virtual interactive notebooks, which students will be receiving links to through Schoology that will be um, covered in class through a lesson so that they know how to utilize those. And then other classes will be using more paper copies just to get adjusted with the content. Hello everyone, this is Ms. Bonning. Welcome to my kitchen. <laughs> um, and I see Ms. Michael is there. Um, I'm the English language arts chair. This year I teach uh, seventh grade language arts and seventh grade reading. Um, Ms. Michael will introduce herself in a minute. You've already met Ms. Stack. She's seventh grade standard and advanced academics. Um, and then Ms. Roper um, is our special educator who teaches um, sections of 6th, 7th, and 8th grade language arts. Um, if you need to get a hold of me, my email is there. If you have any questions about your child's reading placement or anything related to reading or English language arts, I can help you uh, uh, resolve that. Ms. Michael? Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Ms. Michael. I teach sixth and seventh grade language arts. Um, I was excited this year because I got to loop with many of my students from last year. So a lot of you might recognize my name or my face. Um, it's a lot of fun kind of jumping back in with kids that I taught because we like hit the ground running. We didn't have to get to know each other too much. Told them to surprise me with something that I didn't know about them from last year. Um, but it's really exciting to be able to jump right back in. Uh, my email address and my office hours are there on the screen, um, and I'll be talking some more in a little bit. <laughs> so the reading teachers uh, this year, Ms. Johnson, she teaches reading 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. She's uh, with the 8th grade team right now. Um, I mentioned Ms. Roper. Mrs. George, formerly Ms. Whittemore, she got married over the summer. Um, she also teaches seventh grade reading, eighth grade reading, as well as sixth grade language arts. Um, and I, of course, teach reading as well. Ms. Smith, uh, she, you, she was mentioned earlier in science. She teaches science, but she also teaches a section of reading called Orton Gillingham. And Orton Gillingham is a program designed for students um, who need 
extra support in phonics and phonemic awareness. It's a very intensive multi-sensory program. We're really excited to be able to, um, to offer that to students. It requires a teacher to have a great deal of training in order to implement the program. And Ms. Smith uh, was able to get that training. And so we're really stoked to have her on the reading and language arts team this year. She's in the sixth grade meeting right now. Ms. Michael, over to you for language arts. All right, so these are our units of study for language arts and for the advanced academics language arts. Um, I, I personally just teach the one on the left. Ms. Stack is our advanced academics or formerly known as GT uh, for seventh grade teacher in language arts. So unit one for standard, we look at facing challenges fearlessly and people who've done uh, bold things in their lives, looking at a lot of people who've had the deck stacked against them, but they overcome. Uh, unit two, analyzing a poets and playwrights choice. Uh, we look at some short, I apologize, there's a helicopter going over my house right now. Um, some short uh, plays and look at the elements of drama and suspense. Unit three, we look at appreciating historical fiction. And unit four, examining our consumer culture, looking at um, ways of appealing to someone if you're trying to persuade them and uh, advertising, things like that. Uh, Ms. Stack, did you wanna talk advanced academics? Yeah, I popped in, I am switched back to my microphone. Um, so advanced academics, our unit one is singing the unsung and empowering voices. So the kids are going to be reading hidden figures and we will be looking at people through history that never really got recognized for their achievements and what they, presented. Uh, unit two, the power of creative voice, expressing ideas through poetry and drama. Um, this is a fun unit. The kids will get to do some acting. They'll get to perform a little bit and come together, hopefully in a way that they can um, to do their presentations. Unit three, voices of the past. This is our historical fiction unit where the kids will get to choose to read a historical fiction novel. And we will study how that history is presented in a fictional text and the kids will have the opportunity to write their own historical fictions before unit four which is finding your voice exploring perspective and social activism which not to have favorites but i have favorites unit four is my favorite we read animal farm which is always really fun to read with the kids and they get a kick out of the animal voices and miss bonning so as I mentioned earlier, when I was talking about Ms. Smith, at Sparrows Point Middle School, we now offer three tiers of reading intervention for students who need just a little bit more work with reading, a little bit more time on that. Um, so we have the Orton-Gillingham, which is a small group program. It's multi-sensory. It's designed to rapidly fill in gaps in phonics and phonemic awareness, as well as fluency. And then we have Just Words, uh, which is a Wilson product, if anybody has heard of that, or maybe your child might have um, done Wilson in elementary school. Um, so the Just Words program is another very small group of students. Um, Ms. Johnson teaches that, and it's designed to go very rapidly. It's a one-year program that fills in gaps um, and gets kids fluent so that we can focus on comprehension. Most of our students in reading are in a program called LLI, or Leveled Literacy Intervention. And this is a fantastic small group program where kids read these beautiful, colorful, short texts. Uh, they frequently can read anywhere between one and four or five texts a week. Um, but we found that does not translate to the remote context. Um, so I got together with Mr. Faherty, um, who I see just popped into the chat. He's the social studies chair and Ms. Weller, the science chair. And we decided that while we're learning remotely, what we're going to do is to help students with content area literacy. So in seventh grade reading, students are learning more and going deeper um, in regards to the Byzantine Empire. So if you hear uh, me or Ms. George talking about Emperor Constantine or Justinian, and you're wondering what's going on, and that's what's going on. We are focused on vocabulary development, Greco-Latin word roots, uh, and comprehension. We're also pulling in those avid strategies, note-taking, 
avid focus notes so that when students go to their science or their social studies class, they have a more firm foundation um, and they're, they're able to be more successful with the text they encounter in other Next slide. <laughs> Ms. Michael. So our grading in language arts is similar to some of the other content areas. Um, our major assignments are worth 30% of students' grade. That includes performance-based assessments, which are the longer writing assessments, uh, and periodic assessments are similar to um, multiple choice type um, assessments that they'll, they would see later on in the year. The minor assessments are worth 70%. Those are things like the show what you knows that we do um, at the end of every class, discussions, triads, any daily assessments that we might do. And that minor category are the um, assignments that can be redone to gain additional practice and then to improve their grade. Uh, practice assignments don't affect that end grade, uh, but they include warm-ups, class discussions, collaborative boards, and daily participation. And those are the types of assignments that kind of get a student ready to then do that minor or major graded assignment. A few notes about Wednesdays, as many teachers have mentioned, uh, we invite students to small group and it's an expectation that students attend. So it sound, it's offered as an invit invitation, um, but it is an expectation. And that's where we're going to be providing remediation and acceleration depending on your students' needs. Uh, so we're, we're excited and we're hoping uh, to see more students on Wednesdays. Uh, a couple other notes about Wednesdays, students will be expected to do asynchronous work, that means independent work on their own, um, and th this might look different uh, according to the teacher. Uh, many teachers are assigning, uh, for example, chapters in a novel to read, as well as discussion posts or journal entries. Um, students also have the time on Wednesdays to finish any work from the previous week that they weren't able to finish. Um, or redo assignments. We strongly encourage students um, who do not who do not get the grade they want the first time to come to office hours um, or to send a message to set up a one-on-one -on -one meeting on Wednesdays in order to get a retake from us so that they can be successful when they redo the assignment. Um, and you're going to notice that all of your language arts teachers have a yellow Wednesday work folder where there will be directions on what students should be doing on Wednesday. Um, also, a note to piggyback on what Ms. Ryan said, we are always delighted um, when a student chooses to put on their camera. There's so much we, we learn about a child from their facial expressions. Um, you know if a kid got it, you know if you need to explain it again. Um, it's just, it makes the experience so much more powerful and rich when we're able to see their faces. And I know that's not always a possibility, um, but if it is, uh, we always love to see their faces. Ms. Michael, did you have anything to add about Wednesdays? Um, no, I think we covered it all. My, for me, my Wednesday work is reading chapters in their novel and journal entries and catching up on anything they may have not gotten done. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mr. Faraday. I'm the department chair for the social studies department. We'll talk more about that a little bit later, but I always like to sort of start our social studies look at content because this is all the different topics and plus some I'll get to that we want to look at over the course of the year. Right now we're in the middle of the Byzantine empire. So your child left off sixth grade with Rome. We're picking up right in the timeline when we had looked at the fall of Rome and, then, and now the Byzantine Empire. We're going to get into feudalism and sort of medieval society. Uh, I always, uh, when we're in the classroom, I always like to do a simulation with feudalism with barbarians invading. Uh, probably won't happen this year, but I'm looking forward to still touching upon the content. We get into nation states with England and France and, and the rise of those, Spain, uh, during the third quarter. Things like the Hundred Years War get touched on. And then we swing west. We swing west to the South America in fourth quarter, and we start to lay the foundation for eighth grade. When we're going to look at the Inca and the Mayans, and then swing northward to North America with the Native Americans, and really set the stage for colonization 
for them and their en entry into eighth grade U.S. history and be able to build their skills as we move forward. Uh, the additional content piece for seventh grade is the vast majority of us uh, will be me, Ms. Knight, and Mr. Fesco will probably be kicking off the National History Day project in October. That is something that the kids have a choice of a topic on connected to a theme, and this year's theme is the key is commu uh, communication. Uh, so more details will come about with that. In addition, we will be taking a look at the election some as we lead up to it in November. We'll just be looking forward to it. I may have an assignment to take a look at the debate, take some notes, and we'll have some uh, discussion about where each candidate stands on issues and have some respectful discussion in class about people's views. Grading and redo policy is pretty standard as along with, with other subjects, 70% minor, the discussions to show what you know, et cetera. The 30% is the major, which is at, like our unit assessment at the end, uh, usually multiple choice questions and some sort of bigger constructed response, sometimes involving documents. Because a lot of the times with our class, we are looking at primary and secondary sources. And the need is in not only in eighth grade, but in ninth grade to be able to look at sources, be able to understand what the author is saying, and then put construct an argument based off of, off of that evidence. And that's something we are going to continue to do as we move forward. Uh, expect that will end up in both minor and major grades as we go along, because looking at information and sources and really deciding where people are and pooling that evidence and being able to support your response is even more, more important today than it has been maybe any other time in history. Uh, and you have to be knowledgeable with that. Next slide. So a little bit about myself. Uh, this is my third year here at Sparrows Point Middle School. I'm the department chair trying to support all of us as we go forth. I have been both at middle school and high school. Used to teach actually years ago at Dundalk High School, not that far down the road here. So I know exactly what your child is entering for ninth grade. I talk government. I know the HSA they take in ninth grade. So I know what skills that we need to touch upon at the middle school level to really make that transition to ninth grade just a little bit easier for them. Uh, I'm a big Ravens and Orioles fan. Glad we're two and home. A little upset with the Orioles, but a hey, better season than I expected. And I'm a big gaming fan, especially a board gaming fan lately. If you have any questions about social studies content, you can feel free to reach out to me. My email, jfarity at bcps.org. And I'm more than willing to answer you and help you out in any way that I can. Go ahead, Mr. Falk. I'm not sure if he's here, but Mr. Falk is usually uh, drops in with a couple classes with Miss Knight in order to assist learning in their class and also has some of his own classes. He's a great colleague. He has a, a special ed background and deals a, a lot with, with supporting and scaffolding those students' instruction. Uh, he's quite an athletic guy who likes rock climbing and has a great sense of humor. Um, if you have any questions as it comes up in those classes, he's a great resource and he uh, certainly adds a lot of levity and uh, content knowledge to our classes. Hi. Whoop. Sorry. My mouse was going a little crazy. Sorry. Hi, I'm Miss Knight, and I am teaching a, a seventh grade class for the second year. Um, and uh, just a little bit about me. This is my 34th year in education and my fourth year at Sparrows Point. Uh, before this, I taught through a program in Baltimore City um, Public Schools at Small Group Instruction. And I'm originally from St. Louis, Missouri, lived here for about 32 years. I'm married and I love spending time with my husband, my dog, my two cats, and I love to dance. I do Scottish Highland dancing, which is um, a little unusual, I guess. Um, and I just, I love spending time with, I love the content for seventh grade, and I'm really looking forward to working with the kids this year on a um, National History Day project, however that manifests itself, whether we're here or back in the building. Um, and I'm um, just, if you have any questions, my email and my um, office hours are on the front of my course page. So feel free to reach out and I will do my utmost best to help any way I can. 
And you all have a great evening. Hello, everybody. My name is Mr. Fetzko. That's my email up at the top there. If you ever have any questions, would like to reach out as well as my office hours code. Um, a little bit about myself. This will be my second year at Sparrows Point Middle School. I am originally from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, so I had to get my Go Steelers jab in there. Sorry, Baltimore fans. Uh, I graduated from the Indiana University of Pennsylvania, where I played basketball uh, at my time there, which um, is, you know, hopefully will help me with this will be my first year as the junior high basketball coach. So I'm very excited to get in the gym with those guys at some point. And uh, I'm just very excited to be here. I've loved my time at Sparrows Point so far. The students, I've been very proud of how they've, uh, you know, just tackled this new world head on. So again, if you guys ever have any questions or would like to reach out, that is my contact information. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Ms. Cherry. I'm the department chair for World Languages, and I'm going to speak on the behalf of my team. We're all in different grade level meetings. Um, most of our seventh graders are in the level B um, section, and um, you'll either have me, me, Ms. Centron, Ms. Strecker, Ms. Lorenzos, and our emails are listed there, along with our office hours and coach classes. Um, so we're gonna get rolling through here. Next slide, please. Um, so some seventh graders might be in the Spanish um, level A, which is also novice. Um, it's mostly about themselves. Um, they're gonna be learning about my circle, which is like my friends and my family, um, my plate, um, my school and my style. And we base our um, levels based off of proficiency expectations. So you'll hear us talk a lot about proficiency um, and I'll show you some examples of what that means is for a novice low versus a novice high. Um, like I mentioned before, most of our seventh graders are in level B, um, where they're going to be talking about then and now comparing their past and their present, um, living well, they'll learn about some celebrations celebrated in the, um, Hispanic world and a day in the life. So they'll talk about, um, themselves there again at the end. Um, and we hope to work our way up to intermediate low. By the end of the year with our proficiency expectations. You can click the next slide, Ms. Stack. Um, so what that might look like for presentational writing, um, a novice low writer will be able to copy some familiar words or phrases. Um, so that's just an example. Um, and for an interpretive reading, we're going to try to get to the end of the year for level B to that learners can understand the main idea and short text when the topic's familiar. So it's going to be things that we have been discussing in class so that they get the main idea. That's the, um, the proficiency expectation there for um, interpretive reading. Um, our virtual classroom expectations, we love using the chat to um, get feedback from our students and for them to participate with us. Um, like has, everyone has mentioned, we love seeing their faces um, and we give them keywords and phrases to use throughout um, the lesson so that they can use as much Spanish as possible. Um, while we're in our Google Meet, we are, it's kind of like a phishing um, technique where we send them to do something and then they check, we check in with them and then we pull them back. So it's important that they are submitting work as we're going through our Google Meet. Um, and we typically get through the outcomes and the try it and the learn about it. And um, I've tried it listed twice, but it's so as we think about it um, and the show what you know. So we give them time through our Google Meet to do that. Um, as far as academic expectations, we really are trying to assess their proficiency. And proficiency just means like what you can do with what you know. Um, so to accurately assess this, we need to know what the student can do independently. And we really are um, using the AVID strategy of focus notes. So it's really important that your student um, has their focus notes and they're really engaged as we do take our focus notes because it gives them the functional chunks of language to use in their um, show what you know part of the lesson. Um, and I also recommend wordreference.com if a student needs to look up a word, but they should always reach, they can always reach out to us as well. Um, but should they feel the need to search things independently, they can use um, word reference. Um, Ms. Stack, can you click on next for us here? Um, so grading and redo policy, we've um, probably seen this through other um, content. So our major 30%, our minor 70%. 
Um, we do things through Flipgrid, Schoology. Um, we try to make things fun with Kahoot. Um, anything in the minor category can be redone um, and have your students reach out to us to redo the assignment. And depending on the assignment, um, we would like them to come into our office hour or invite them to our Wednesday session to redo the assignment. Um, this year we're focusing, last year we had um, major assessments, but with the virtual learning, we're doing real world daily tasks um, as our um, assessments are not in um, available to us virtually, but these will be um, it's just like a real world task and it's kind of small here but basically it's something that they could actually apply to the real world and why you would use that language outside of our classroom um, our Wednesday expectations are just the same as every other content um, we're expecting that you be there if we invite you Oops. Um, we're hoping that students take time to finish anything from Monday and Tuesday um, it's an opportunity to message their teachers for support um, with help or questions um, and we depending on what type of week it was with our students um, we're talking about hosting like a Kahoot um, I tend to put out quizlets to preview the next um, topics input um, we would like to start hosting conversation hours for your students so that they can practice in Spanish speaking um, a study hour for major assessments before major assignments are due and to review um, how to get the students to go to the next proficiency step because um, our goal is to keep pushing them higher for proficiency. And I'll show you why on the next slide. Um, so it's not available in high, it's available in high school, but in middle school, we will lay a really uh, solid foundation for your student to get the seal of literacy in Maryland. Um, this is a medal that they can wear. Um, if they take the AP course in Spanish and score four or higher, um, a four or five, I also taught AP um, in high school, um, my first four years at Baltimore County. So I have an idea of, um, of what this is like. So um, this seal just gives them another boost in um, their career um, or college. It provides them another um, opening there for, um, for their proficiency to a reason to motivate them is to get this medal because it's really cool. And should you need anything, um, I'm also Miss Ch I'm Miss Cherry, and my email is ccherry at bcps.org. That's all I have for world languages. And I just want to say thank you to everyone who came tonight. I do see that there are some. Oh no, those are Mr. Palace's links. Um, we appreciate your coming, and if you ever need anything, there's plenty of us that are willing to help. Please reach out. Please contact us. We are here for you. And Ms. Sutton, any final words? Yes, again, just want to say thank you for everyone that came tonight. I know um, the special areas are in a um, separate Google Meet. If anybody has questions for them, um, Ms. Stack, do you happen to know, have the name of that Google Meet? Can we put that in the comments? Which one? For the special areas where Ms. Ryan and Mr. Sefchek are oh. going. Yep, give um, me a second. Mm -hmm. So we'll put that in the, in the comment section for anybody who wants to go to that Google Meet if you have um, specific questions for them. And then there's also a session for any questions for tech help. And so while Ms. Stack is looking for that, um, I want to just say thank you again for participating. Um, this is definitely a different year, um, but we are excited about being here and supporting your child in all the ways that we can. And so you have a great team, the seventh grade. And so I want to thank everybody for coming and say have a great evening.